Hi, I'm Anya. Hi, I'm Michael Wood. Hi, I'm Rosie McEwen. Hi, I'm Daryl McCormack. Hi, I'm Daphne Keith. Hi, I'm Joanna Howard King. I'm here with Elle, and we're going to be talking about the movies that made me. My first memory of film, I think it was back on like video cassette. It might have been like The Lion King or Jungle Book. My mom actually used to run like a nursery for kids, like after they finished school. So I remember I was watching. I think the Jungle Book. I watched Steve McQueen's Hunger when I was at school, and I must have been about 16. And it was the first time that I was really taken aback by a film that wasn't just a lovely story, and then I sort of forgot about it the moment it was over. It sort of stayed with me, and I realized that film could be anything. When I was younger, I used to have this um, CD of Soul Plane, so I used to. <laughs> I used to come home from school and watch it all the time because we didn't have much films, you know, back then. So yeah, I used to come home and watch it in, after school and I used to know all the words. My first memory of film would have to be Bollywood movies. I think they, they um, shaped me as a kid. I used to love the singing and the dancing and um, yeah, that definitely made me want to kind of put myself out there a bit. Shutters, which is a Jamaican film, had a lot of impact on me because I hadn't been able to go back to Jamaica for many years of my life and there's not really many Jamaican films that I'm aware of so to be able to watch that film where it kind of showed me what Jamaica was really like in the kind of obviously within a story and stuff without it being a documentary was really beautiful. I'm really inspired by a lot of Irish actors I'm not biased but like you know I love like Jesse Buckley, Sir Sharon and Paul Mescal is amazing you know, all these people are around my own age. Around the time I was signing with an agent, I was about 17, and I was came quite late to it, but I watched There Will Be Blood by Paul Thomas Anderson. I remember my agent, who's still my agent now, saying, what kind of actor do you want to be? You know, what kind of performance would you like to emulate? And Daniel Day-Lewis, I said, oh, it would be all right to be like that, if possible, <laughs> which i um, still striving for that level of insane talent. I'd say as a kid, Meryl Streep, I, I mean, she just played so many different characters. And from that moment on, I used to say, I want to be a character actress like Meryl Streep. One actress performance that took my breath away and will stay with me forever and ever is Charlize Theron in Monster. Because she's so far away from herself and she's pushing the sort of aesthetic boundaries in the sense that she's literally stepping in someone else's skin and she is so unafraid of the way she looks. And I think as a woman, we grow up in a world where there's so many pressures. The beauty standards are ridiculous and exhausting. Maybe something that's inspired me to, you know, make sure that I work really, really hard is probably Joaquin Phoenix in The Joker. I think his performance was just incredible. It was so, it felt so real. Um, you know, and really quite amazing because he'd done so much but so little and it just, it really affected me. And I feel like not, you know, when you watch a performance and you think like who else could have done that and you can't think of anyone else, I really think that's a special, special performance. There's a very big issue in the industry with, I want to say nepotism, but not just from parents, from social media and from other professions. And it's not to say that they don't, they shouldn't be doing film, it's just so sad to see so many actors who are fighting to pay for their studies to be able to learn how to act and there's so many people who deserve those opportunities and don't get them because of people who just felt like it would be, it would be fun to do that, which I have no issue with, but I just feel like there's so many actors that don't get a shot. We have to continue to like venture into like areas and demographics that we haven't represented fully and keep exploring. I definitely like being biracial and Irish. Like, I think if you think of an Irish person, you usually think like red hair and freckles, like that's a stereotype. You know, Ruth Negger for me was a massive inspiration, you know, when I started off. And I guess, yeah, I'd love to just continue to represent the diversity that's in Ireland at the moment. I think we're going in the right direction. I think all the conversations that are happening are necessary and needed and I feel the change. I know other people do as well. We've got a lot more work to do, but Specifically, I think everyone is just a lot, just a lot more aware. I think there's been a lot of brilliant conversations over the last few years and a lot of work has been done um, around opportunity and access and, and visibility, but 
And this is partly from, from doing The Little Mermaid. It, it's really hit home how important it is for people to see themselves on screen. Having all types of people writing their stories and having those stories being told and all different types of actors from different backgrounds, I think some work's been done on it, which is brilliant, but I think that to me is you know, something that uh, there's a lot of work still to be done. I don't know, it's about pushing the boundaries as such, but I always want to tell stories that feel very human because I want people to leave the cinema feeling something. I think we've, we've entered a really cool moment of time right now where we're getting to investigate new ways of portraying women. And I'm really excited that I get to be a part of this generation that gets to portray women in a much fuller and deeper way. The main thing that, like, you know, which I feel like a lot of black actors share is just to keep creating opportunities for black people to be in leading roles and tell stories where a normal story, you know, it could be anything, it could be anyone, but you know, black people are in those roles. I think that's what's super important to me. I think what I definitely want to do, you know, is to kind of improve or, you know, tell more Jamaican stories. Cause like I said, when I was growing up, there wasn't many. I think there are long held uh, traditions in this industry, some of which are fine, many of which need to be broken down. Making sure it's as an inclusive and represented industry as possible is so important, not just because that's the right thing to do, but because it makes for better art.